Okay, it's one o'clock, we can get started. Um, welcome to everybody online and welcome to the people in the room. I'm Gina Canarosi from the Chemistry Biology Pharmacy Information Center. And today I'm giving the coffee lecture number 61, which is on alpha fold two. Okay, um, hang on a sec. Why is that not? Oh, okay, so what is alpha fold two? Um, it's a deep learning neural network that predicts a protein structure from its sequence. It's, uh, the neural network has three parts. It's a big complicated um, system, but we can think of it as a black box where you input a sequence and the output is a protein structure. I'll go into a little more detail uh, in the middle. Oh, bummer. Okay, so a reminder about protein structures. Proteins are linear molecules. Um, they are composed of amino acids, which are usually represented by their one letter code. So here we have a protein sequence made out of ADP, S, Y, L, M, et cetera. And this forms local structures, which are um, secondary structures, which are beta strands, alpha helices, and loops. And this forms into a 3D structure, which is the protein fold or the protein structure. So what alpha fold two does is um, predict this, but keep in mind that you can also have higher order structures if maybe eight of these come together and make a big complex, then we'll have something that looks like this. And this is called the multimer, multi or it has higher order structures. So there's a, another program of alpha fold two called alpha, alpha fold multimer, which is made for predicting um, complexes and for doing protein protein interactions. Okay, so this is a longstanding uh, problem in biology is the protein folding problem. We have the sequences, the sequences are easy to get, we want the structure. The structures are experimentally, thank you, hard to determine. Um, so how do we get the protein structures experimentally? Uh, there's three ways to do it, X-ray crystallography, NMR, or cryo-EM, but these are all very time-consuming, and time-consuming means weeks, months, years it can take in the past to get the structure experimentally. But once you have an experimental structure, you're um, pretty confident uh, that it's correct. You can see how hard it is to get experimental structures if you look at the protein data bank. The protein data bank or the PDB is the repository for experimental structures. So people have been working on experimental structures for a long time and currently there are 216,000 structures. That's far, far, far less than the number of proteins that there are. And so you can see the problem with this is that it's so hard to make an experimental structure. That's why it's nice to have something that can predict the structure from the sequence. Um, when you have the protein structure in the PDB, it's stored like this, the XYZ coordinates of each atom. So here you have atom 19, it's an alpha carbon, it's part of a threonine, and this is the XYZ, and it's got some information. So alpha fold two came along and they do very, very good predictions of the uh, structure from the sequence. Alpha fold two is a product of DeepMind. Uh, DeepMind, it's a company that specializes in artificial intelligence. They were founded in 2010. Uh, they were bought by Alphabet, which is Google's parent company in 2014, and they started off with some classical problems in computer science, that's playing Go and playing chess and playing Shoki. I play Shoki too, but maybe a different kind of Shoki than this one. And uh, then they attacked the protein folding problem in 2016 is when they started. So an overview of alpha fold two, um, this is a very brief overview, is that it's like a neural network. It has a training phase and it has a prediction phase. So in the training phase of the neural network, you input the sequences, known sequences and structures. And when they trained this, they trained it on 180,000 of uh, experimental protein structures from the PDB. And these... Um, that was how many there were probably at the time that they that they uh, did this. And 
when you input a sequence, you can construct a multiple sequence alignment. Say this is the sequence that has the structure. I go and I fetch from the databases all of the related sequences. And then I have two things. I have a multiple sequence alignment, which is here. Here I can see the patterns of conservation and variation of this protein family over the course of evolution. And that tells me some information about the structure. Is it on the surface? Is it in the core? If it's in the core, it varies less. The other thing that you can look for is covariation. And we see these two positions here in the multiple sequence alignment. It's an arginine here, it's a D here. When it changes to K, it changes to E. They're varying together in time and that infers um, physical proximity. So looking at all of the pairwise relationship, which takes the form of a matrix and the multiple sequence alignment, you can um, infer what's close together in 3D space. So in the training phase, you input the sequence in the structure, you output around 21 million parameters and their values, and this is the neural network. Um, then you do the prediction phase. Again, you do the same thing. You put in a sequence. Now you don't have the structure you want it. You put in the 21 million parameters and their values. You construct the multiple sequence alignments in this covariation matrix, and you output a structure with confidence estimates. Um, in addition to outputting the structure, um, Alpha fold two also gives confidence intervals. So if you see the, the structure is here from start to finish, I mean, the sequence starts at zero and finishes at 175, this is the confidence score. So you can see you have high confidence scores at some parts of the protein and a low one here. And you don't know why it's low. It could be a disordered region. It could be there's not enough information. So um, when you do this kind of prediction, you uh, you don't know if you have a good prediction or not. Therefore, it's important to keep in mind that they're models and you have to treat them as models. It's not the same quality as an experimental structure. Okay. So they started got, getting a lot of attention um, around 2020 because they participate in this structure prediction contest. So the structure prediction community has this contest, the CASP, the Critical Assessment of Structure Prediction. And this is the output of the uh, CASP. These are average scores. So in 2006 to 2016, you can see there was very little change. It wasn't progressing very much. But in 2018, AlphaFold came and they did a lot better than what had been done for the previous decade and even before that. Um, so then in 2020, this contest runs every two years. They had... Um, they participated again. They had two years to improve the algorithm and then they blew everybody out of the water. This is an amazing prediction. It's close to the, um, the scores that you will get with experimental structures. And for this, they were named in 2021 Science, Science Magazine's Breakthrough of the Year. And it really was transformative for protein structure prediction. Here they say they solve a scientific problem that's been on the to-do list for 50 years. Have they solved it entirely? Not exactly, but they made a giant leap in what was available. So this contest runs every two years. What happened in 2022? That was the last time the contest was run. Well, DeepMind didn't participate. I don't think, I, I don't think they're actively working on AlphaFold in a big way. Maybe they're doing tweaks here and there, but they did make their code open source. And in the 2022 CASP 15, everybody used AlphaFold almost. So now people are making improvements. It's open to the community and people can do improvements on AlphaFold themselves. So this is a word cloud from the second day of the presentations of CASP 15. And you can see that AlphaFold uh, played a large role in the prediction contest. The program's still around, so they ran the program uh, on in the contest. And if here are the groups or, uh, ordered from lowest scores to highest scores, AlphaFold still beat half of the groups uh, without even any changes from the previous year. 
but you can see that there's a lot of improvement going on. Where'd my mouse go? And even here, there's like five groups that are doing um, large scale improvements. So the prediction is getting better. Um, it's I don't think DeepMind is participating anymore, but um, the jumps here are not as big as the jumps from AlphaFold 2. It really has been transformative. So since that time, there's a couple developments that have happened. One of them is AlphaFold DB, which is a collaboration between the European Bioinformatics Institute and DeepMind. And they basically ran AlphaFold on all of the protein structures that are available in UniPro. This happened in some steps, but in July 2022, they released a version of AlphaFold DB that contains all of the structures in this non-redundant database, which is UniPro. So now if your protein sequence is in a public database, it probably already has a structure prediction. You might want to use the program if you have proprietary data or you sequenced a genome and maybe your protein isn't in there. It seems like the um, focus is shifting now to protein complexes and protein-protein interactions. And so in 2022, they released this AlphaFold Multimer. There's another one, Rosetta Fold, which is also performing extremely well using the same kind of um, methods as AlphaFold. If you want to run AlphaFold at ETH Zurich, it's available on the Euler cluster. All students and staff of um, ETH Zurich can get an account on the Euler cluster. I set it up. I could run it within an hour. So if you want to run it there, you have to set up this um, account. It's maintained by ETH Scientific IT Services, and they have a giant wiki page that has all you need to know, all the scripts you need to, to run it. And they give occasional workshops on um, AlphaFold, and the last one was in January 2024. And on their wiki page, you can find a link to the, the slides from this. If you're not at ETH Zurich, you can use Google's CoLab. They have both AlphaFold 2 and AlphaFold 2 Multimer available for use. So um, in conclusion, AlphaFold 2 has been a really transformative in terms of protein structure prediction. The structures are good, very good models of protein structure. There are models, they aren't experimental structures. Um, they could be as good as an experimental structure or not, but you don't know what you have when you run it. So you have to be cautious. There's some limitations where they don't perform well are disordered regions, novel structures, point mutations, um, different conformations, and the effects of ligands are hard to predict. Okay, so that's all. I'm happy to take any questions in the room or on Zoom if there are any. Any comments, questions? Yeah? I haven't compared Rosetta. Um, the question was, have I compared ro ro or have somebody? Somebody probably has. I don't. I don't have the comparisons here, but I think <coughs> Rosetta is doing very, very well, and they're actively in development. It's a uh, group of David Baker in Washington, and they've been working on this forever, so they're very invested. AlphaFold is open source. Yeah, they yeah, they released the code in 2021, and that's why everybody used it in the structure prediction. So now it's basically everybody tweaking AlphaFold to get better, better predictions. Yeah. You just put in the sequence, and the output is a PDB file. So you can open it in PyMole, for example, and view it in PyMole. You Oh. 
Uh, the question was, can you fix a distance in alpha fold when you're doing a prediction? I don't know. I, I think this is something that scientific IT services could help you with. But uh, yeah, I have no idea. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, so, and it outputs exactly a PDB, like the same format as the PDB format. So you can read it in and PyMol, no problem. Yeah. And that, well, then you can visualize, visualize that PyMol is for visualization. So then you can color it or, yeah, as you like. You can also, I think PyMol has a script on their PyMol wiki that will read in the, um, there's a file that gives the confidence levels of your prediction, and then you can visualize the confidence levels on the structure in PyMol. This exists, yeah. Yeah. Okay, any more questions or online? Uh, thank you so much. Will these slides be available somewhere that we can download? Um, I can, can you email me? Um, the question was, are the slides available? Um, if you email me at cgina at eth.seha, yes. then I can send them to you. Okay, thank you. Okay, sure. All right. Um, okay, then I'll shut the meeting down. Thank you very much. The um, Oops, I forgot to say, we have a coffee lecture card and the coffee lecture tomorrow is open. Alex will be given by Leo Betchart. Let me see if I can... I'll put this in the chat in case anybody wants the coffee lecture card. Oh, no, I won't. Okay. <laughs> uh, thank you.